Hi guys, welcome to uh, another Tech Talk video. So today, got this box from uh, Fosi Audio. It's a receiver for uh, transducers. And uh, I thought, why not? You know, I like uh, using transducers in the sim rig. You know, it adds a lot of immersion. So uh, I'll be doing an unbox, check the functionality, and uh, install it and see how it does. And yeah, a blacked out box, a picture of the amplifier. Um, they state some uh, some of the benefits of uh, dealing with them, and actually, as I'm recording this video, they're celebrating a seven-year anniversary. So it's not like they're new in the market, and I hope that uh, some of their experience is uh, already used for good. And uh, yeah, good padding. Should be quite thick. And in the box we have classic manual, and I actually looked through it. And uh, it's very well written, not a lot of, uh, like it makes sense, it's simple, and it has all the information you need. There is uh, a remote control, because it has a, yeah, an IR um, receiver, so you can uh, use the remote, because you can use this as a receiver for uh, some passive or active speakers if you want. Then you have uh, a Bluetooth antenna that you can connect in the back and connect your smartphone to listen to music. Then you have a mini jack to connect to your PC if you want that, or the other way. Could also be an old phone. And of course the power, power outlet. Let's take out the receiver. It's a pretty well packed and it's quite heavy actually. Box. And I really love the design. Um, yeah. So this is what you get in the box. I'll uh, go through the details in a moment. The receiver, remote, the antenna, the mini jack, the power cable. Oh yeah, and of course the manual. Okay, so let's uh, have a closer look at the build quality and then some of the functionality. Let's start off with the, with the unit. Uh, it's, it's, it's all metal, metal casing, uh, really nice. Uh, has a good weight to it and, and also a good, um, feels very solid. You know, nothing is rattling or anything. So, and if you look at the back, um, all the edges are flush. There's no like, um, gaps or anything. It's it's really really uh, it feels really well made. Um, so that's that's definitely a positive. I can I can feel here. Let's start in the front. So it has the IR blaster for the remote, and these uh, these dials. I think they are made of metal. To be honest, and they have a really nice tactile feel. Um, very these have small increments, and the volume has has a big increment. This also acts as an on-off button and also a source selector. Push it. Like that. Yeah, and in the back, we have the Bluetooth antenna, optical input. Um, right now on my transducer receiver setup, I'm using four mini jack cables from the external sound card to the amplifier. Now I'm just gonna use the optical, which is very convenient. Pre out and auxiliary for mini jack from uh, if you want to use uh, yeah an input from your PC or something else via a mini jack and then you have the dials for um, for the speakers for the speaker cables or transducers I'm gonna use it you have one two three four five channels depending on the setup uh, the 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 wattage um, is changed so and I'm not gonna use the sub so let's see how it's gonna work. Yeah, and the, the power connector here. So, and some uh, regular small rubber feet here, pretty nice. 
and uh, a little plug here or dial uh, switch you might say to adjust um, if you want the, the output to be um, if it separates the, 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 the frequencies to a sub or, 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 or flat as suggested here um, you want the same output for all the channels which I will be using as I'm gonna just add simple transducers to this one so yeah so that's the build quality of, of the unit really impressed and then we have our remote it's uh, nothing special this is made of plastic uh, but the design uh, seems quite familiar if you ask me and uh, yeah you have some options here uh, some input um, maybe you can change the led colors i don't know on off and mute so yeah this is the this is the bad uh, the remote bluetooth so just to give you an idea how uh, things are going to be uh, i'll plug in the Bluetooth antenna and the power. It's like a router. So again, the power. And, uh, there should be power. Let's uh, try. So the red indicates that you're using optical. The blue, currently it's searching for uh, Bluetooth devices. You can find it on your iPhone and the name will be the device name here. And I think we have the orange and that's the auxiliary if you use the mini jack input. This is the way switch. I will be using the red one. So that's how it works. I think it's pretty sleek. And uh, yeah. That's how it works. I'll turn it off. Oh, yeah. And also, it remembers the last function, which is a quite nice feature. Let me just briefly uh, go through the manual. And uh, yeah, page one, just what the content is. And then here you will get some specs, which I want to share with you actually. And you can read them. So what I like to note is the options you have here. Because you can run a four channel times 30 and one 60 watt subwoofer out. Or you can run five channels at 30 watts. So you can actually connect five transducer units if you want to. And it will adjust the, the impedance ohm. And it runs on Bluetooth 5. Yeah, these are the specs of the, the unit. Here it explains about the um, switching the flat versus, um, yeah, if you're using the sub or you're not using the sub, basically. And um, what I want to mention on top of this is uh, I could imagine also um, connecting a, a set of stereo speakers. And use it as a um, in a separate uh, situation um, as a small receiver for for listening to music or even uh, input from the PC. So um, I think that's a nice added feature that you could do with this small um, receiver. Let's see um, how that will turn out. Okay, so the way I've set it up right now is using this. Uh, old and also cheap no-name receiver from uh, I think Amazon it runs five times four channels but it has four individual um, volume knobs for each channel which isn't a benefit because I prefer just control it via uh, the software and uh, I use SimHub for that so I'm just scared that sometimes someone touches this so I, I accidentally do it so it's out of sync and it's connected I have four mini jacks, which is really not optimal. That's a lot of cable managing that you need to do. And then, uh, as you see, the speakers, uh, speaker cables uh, for all the channels. That goes in and to the sound card near the PC. And then it's connected here, SIM hub. And you adjust what channel you want to do what. Okay. 
So I finally got to mount everything, install it, play a bit with the cables from the old one, uh, the old receiver to the new one. Let's turn it on here. I've actually uh, been running it for um, one hour uh, in uh, using uh, the telemetry in the SIM hub, and it doesn't get hot neither. So one thing I'd like to note is um, it has banana plug options. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't use that, so it was actually not that easy to make these cables uh, sit properly. Um, I would just need to extend the cables, so not an issue at all. But it's pretty cool that it has the option for, for proper plugs for speakers. So this is how it looks now. I'm using the optical in over here, this one. And uh, yeah, and it's set for the optical input. Okay, so now let's uh, run through some of the settings and uh, challenges I've had and uh, take a couple of laps so you can see uh, how this works and uh, how I've set it up with the, with the FOSI receiver. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start with, uh, with some of the settings uh, I'm using and what you need to do and also some of the challenges I've had. So I'm actually only running it on two channels. So I have a bit of bad news and good news here. And the good news is um, when I first set it up, I was using the, the optical and the digital device here. And the output was very low. And I didn't realize that I had to switch it to the optical in and analog out, which I've always been using. But as I'm using the optical, I was sure that I had to use this one as well, but I was not supposed to do that. And I was actually scared that the, the 30 watts that this is running compared to the 50, um, that it would not, it would not be sufficient. Um, but I was wrong. I switched it over to the, to this one and figured it as a quad or stereo, doesn't matter. And, uh, and the output is really good. Like it's the same level as, as the 50 watts. You cannot, uh, well, you can adjust it here in digital. Um, and you can, even if I just max it out, it's too much. It's not lacking power. It has what it needs and you get really good effects from it. So, and uh, I think that's, that's the good news that uh, it is powerful enough and it delivers what it has to do. And it's, it's, it's very simplistic. Um, the settings, though, it took me quite a while, and uh, I've been running four channels, six channels, eight channels here. Uh, you simply change it by uh, defining here what uh, what output you want here. Let's say eight channel, and you just uh, refresh in SimHub, and you'll have eight channels. So and you can test them out here. That one is on hundred, so it makes. Uh, a, a base plate rattle a little, so I don't like that. And then this one is like the big deep one. So, but I don't have all the channels here. Well, actually, this is the issue. It does repeat the same channels over and over. So I've narrowed it down to only two. So this is the bad news, if you might say. Actually, I used over one hour on this. Um, fiddling with it and I cannot make the software tell it to only uh, to separate it, it, it cannot make windows understand that I have I want four individual channels out from one digital signal so yeah but do you not because uh, when you, you do use the transducer setup um, you do not need a lot of channels. Uh, actually, two is very, very good because they are very distinct. Uh, the more channels you have, the more blurry the image or the sound image will be for you and the vibration. So, um, yeah, I'm running it with only two channels. That's the downside. Uh, I might be wrong. Maybe you can do something differently, but I tried, honestly, a lot. You know, you can adjust this one to be, yeah, a lot more. Give me a second. One. Um, as I just showed, you can uh, you can lower it. it. It depends on this one here. Let's see how it looks here now. 
yeah, stereo. So this is the, the control panel of the USB sound card. So it also might be something with that. But I do have it working with four individual channels on my, my old setup. Nonetheless, I think we should uh, take it for a drive. And I'm using the Roll Impact and Roll Rumble so it can feel the, um, when you're on the limit of the tarmac um, and you hit the curbs, you don't. So that's actually very useful information. And uh, I'll see if I can drag it so you can see it while I'm driving. Let's turn on the car. And uh, it's going to be a bit hard with the, with the screen on here, but it should be possible. So immediately you can feel the effect when you change the gear, which is really, really nice. It uh, gives that added immersion. And then, see I hit that curve and it puts the telemetry through that one. Oh, this is annoying. I can't see this. So yeah, as you can see, I'm hitting the right curve here. It gives immediate effect. Okay, so let's uh, let's do a lap and see how um, how it feels with uh, with two channels assigned for rumble strips and uh, road vibration or impact, you might say. So it's gonna be a bit hard with uh, this one. Missed that apex, but. We're gonna have a lot here. Let's see, and the rumble is amazing. You can really feel the texture. Same here, and I cannot look into the corner. <laughs> yeah, I just want to show you the telemetry on the on the left side here. Usually, I don't have it running here. Yeah, running with two channels is not as big of a deal if compared to to, to multiple, like say four channels, as uh, one would think. Um, you can definitely use this and have a lot of fun. Um, of course, I would have loved the third channel as I do a, a fourth and a third um, to separate more. But again, less is more. And maybe I just uh, don't know how to do it with the settings uh, from the optical setup um, and the digital output input and translating that for Windows and for SimHub to understand that I have or four channels uh, output because the amp does have four channel output so i don't know what's wrong to be honest but running with two channels here you can see how i hit the curb there and definitely it is not lacking power in the output so i put the volume knob on on max and i lowered it um, on the output of sim hub <laughs> Can't see the apex here. So yeah, I'm just gonna finish this lap and run through the see. very first corner. Is this is really really special on Watkins Glen. So I just wanted to share that with you. Really, it the uh, yeah, the immersion is really good. So it's as expected. Just as much about the the units you can connect to it. And uh, this amp runs the, the big units I have under my seat very well, even though they're rated to 50 or, or more watts. So yeah, that's how it looks when, uh, when you drive it. And uh, it's definitely approved, uh, even with just two channels. And so looking at only the two channels here, show you the options you have when you, you select. And you can add even more effects. But um, yeah, you just tell channel one, should you activate ABS or channel two? And you just define that. I'm not gonna run through all of this, but this is how it works. I've set the gear shift that when I change the gears, it's very clear. Yeah, it gives that little immersion. Um, and then you have the road impacts and the road rumble. And they mix actually, it's like if you enable one, you also need to enable the other one to, to have the good feeling of, of the curves. This is how I do. I don't have them all on, on, on 100, see, except this one. So yeah, this is uh, how I'm running it. And this is, oops, this is how you can set it up. Um, and this really gives some good immersion. Okay, so let's do some conclusions. The price point is really strong, honestly. 
Uh, I don't know how the EU pricing is, but $150 is not much. The build quality is really, really good. It has a lot of features. Um, the aesthetics are good, and it's really simplistic. And uh, they do advertise it as a five channel. As a, again, I could not make it work um, within separating the channels properly, but maybe that's just my settings. But at least the two channels I had uh, separate are really, really good. They do add the punch you need for even for the big units I'm running. I'll add the description uh, in the video uh, for the units I'm running, the transducers. So that's really good. Uh, I like the quality, sure. Um, yeah, you can use it in multiple ways. You know, you have uh, all these options here. It's, it's yeah, you have quite some features in it, I think, for, for this little unit. Um, so is it enough to run just two channels in swim racing? I would say yes. With the punch it packs, yes. Would you prefer to have more channels? Yes. Uh, I'm running four with my old one, um, and I'll stay with that. But again, less is more in this, and uh, I think it's more up to you what you like and don't like. You can use this for transducers in sim racing for sure. And I think that's about this for this review. I don't know what more to say. If you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask me. And you haven't watched any video about how to make this transducer setup properly, uh, I have another video you can check out. I'll put a link somewhere. So yeah, check that out if you want to know more because it does add a lot of emotion when you do sim racing and I will not drive without it. It's actually um, really, 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 really fun to feel you going over curbs, you going over bumps or whatever, pushing the car to the limit. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy it and um, stay tuned. Let's see what happens next.